your story is quite uh, well known around Queensland, um, but we've obviously got a few of our colleagues interstate who might not know you so well. Um, do you want to just run through your journey so far and uh, and what's happened to you recently? Um, yeah, of course. Well, just winding it all the way back, uh, I was a medical student in 2010, and um, I was about I was over halfway through medical school then, and had a car accident when my car aquaplaned, or we think it aquaplaned, and um, I got a spinal cord injury as a result. So um, I lost the use of my fingers and everything below the chest. And I spent um, around eight months in hospital at the Princess Alexandra in Brisbane, and then about another four years just uh, rehabilitating and putting life back together. And I came back to medical school in 2015. I finished medical school in 2016. Um, had a bunch of issues getting an internship with a spinal cord injury and everything that had happened, but eventually got the internship and I started in 2017. This year is my fourth year as a doctor. I work as a senior resident in the ED at the Gold Coast University Hospital. Been lucky enough to do a bunch of stuff around disability, junior doctors, and all that kind of jazz and um, it's actually been a pretty amazing journey despite the challenges that we've had. So that's yeah, pretty much it. Um, so. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a very inspirational story and I'd urge anybody to, to go online and have a look into it in more detail. But just for you to, uh, you know, to take something tragic and it would have been very easy to, to give up and, and, you know, just forget about your, your medical career. But just to show some resilience and keep going, it's, it's very inspiring. Um, what, what are some of the initiatives and that you're working on just now and some of the associations that you have been uh, helping out? Yeah, I, I mean, my main thing obviously has been around disability, even though I've never actually felt disabled. Funnily enough, after the accident, I felt uh, more enabled and I feel like I've accomplished more afterwards than I ever have in my life before. But, um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of my work's been around disability. And uh, there's been a couple of things that happened which prompted that. When I came back to medical school, uh, the, um, there's a consortium of medical school leaders for Australia and New Zealand, and they developed a set of guidelines called the Inherent Requirements. And those guidelines had all these physical attributes that if they were applied strictly, it would have excluded me from medical school. But fortunately, at Griffith University, um, they kept me on and they got me through medical school and uh, I graduated. But I realized that there are a lot of barriers for education uh, when you have a disability, not just in medicine, but other areas as well. I've heard stories about people in law being discriminated against um, and all sorts of other disciplines. So I realized that uh, education, not just tertiary, but even primary and secondary was a barrier. So at that point, me and a couple of uh, colleagues interstate founded an organization called Doctors with Disabilities Australia. And the goal of that organization has been to really advocate for a more inclusive medical profession, both in medical education and employment. And that's really come a long way. So the medical deans of Australia and New Zealand have been really progressive over the last year and they've started developing a very inclusive inherent requirements guideline, which is fantastic. And I think if we can show some leadership in medical education, uh, that has a flow on effect to all levels of education in other areas as well, because if we can't do it in medicine, um, or if we can do it in medicine rather, um, they should be able to do it anywhere else. So I think that kind of leadership by the medical profession is really important. But then the second arm of that is employment. And I have faced some really interesting uh, challenges, uh, not just in my internship, but when I was trying to get into a specialty program. And I um, had all sorts of comments along the way. I had a lot of people that were very supportive as well, I must say. But I realized that um, employment 
is a barrier for people with disability generally. Um, and I think that's something we've needed to change as well. So I worked with a bunch of organisations in that area. And the uh, Australian Medical Association, Queensland has been a brilliant advocate for the medical profession. Um, they've started developing some policies around making the medical profession itself inclusive. They've started, um, they've advocated for medical students to have a more inclusive place. Um, they've done some work around disability and COVID-19, which is, I guess, a very timely topic. Um, so they've been um, good enough to advocate with me to look at the interests of people with disability during COVID-19. Uh, you know, if, if, for example, if you take me, my lung function is really compromised. I'm only breathing with the diaphragm and my rib cage, which should normally help me breathe and cough and things like that, doesn't really work much at all. So my respiratory function is severely affected. And if I got COVID, I would potentially have a pretty poor outcome. So, you know, in any other situation, like in the normal flu season or whatever else, we'd have enough resources to manage that and uh, manage the treatment of SAMI um, properly, I guess, or as best as we can. But in other countries, it's come to a point where they've had to ration their ventilators, for example. And in America, there were some reports and complaints made to human rights bodies about people with disability being adversely affected by that. And interestingly, I had some conversations with some medical friends. And, uh, you know, the, the impression is, say you have me, a 35-year-old guy with a high-level spinal cord injury and someone with not, the other person would have a better chance of survival. So if we're at a point where we had to ration ventilators, I mean, that's a very extreme case, then do you give the ventilated someone who has a better chance of surviving? These are really difficult ethical questions, but um, there's some of the things that we've had conversations around lately. So um, that's sort of a range of some of the things I've been doing. I've also had, uh, I've had, I've been really lucky. I've been working with the Gold Coast Titans as a doctor for their physical disability rugby team. Um, I've, uh, I've become an ambassador for Physical Disability Australia. I've had the chance to do some work with amazing organisations around the country and all, also overseas um, to make the world a bit more inclusive. So it's, um, it's been really good and I feel like this injury has given me the opportunity to try and change some things for the better. So what uh, for other for other people with uh, physical disabilities trying to get into the workplace with you having gone through it what's the what sort of advice would you be would you be giving to people the thing i've found um is that it's all about misconceptions about uh what the barriers are you know people have uh or potential employers and people have said oh you know this could go wrong this could go wrong this could go wrong when i was a medical student someone said oh would patients take you seriously if you're in a wheelchair so it's all misconceptions, and a lot of those things haven't actually been a problem. There are also barriers in your own head. I know I had a lot of fears about how I would do, what I could do, what I could do, but all that just melts into the background when you start working. So what my advice would be is just to um, keep hammering it until, uh, until you get into the workplace, and then everything else will just melt away and it'll just become natural. Um, there are also a bunch of resources as well, you know, there's a federal government scheme called Job Access which funds a lot of the workplace modifications and some modifications actually benefit everyone in the workplace. These can be things like a sliding door or an adjustable hot desk or whatever it may be and that has a really good effect on other people at work as well. So there's plenty of resources and for employers it's really Know, proven that a more diverse workplace has benefits for them. So um, really, it's just about changing that mindset. And I think um, it's up to each and every one of us really to advocate for that. You know, if you have a disability, I think keep going, keep pursuing dream, 
but for the people around them or the people around us, I think it really helps if you make some noise as well. For me, when I was trying to get the internship, there were a lot of people that asked questions. There were a lot of people that advocated. There were a lot of people that pushed for it. Um, the media was supportive. The community was supportive. My colleagues were supportive. So all along the way, all that's really made a good difference. And because all that, you know, I, I really just want to keep giving back. Um, so yeah, I think we all just have to get in there and try and make things better and make the world a better place. Yeah, look, it's it's definitely it's a great cause you're advocating for because we're all I mean we're always pushing for inclusion and, and uh, diversity of all different kinds, but uh, but for disability it's not something that's that's often in the spotlight. So I think you know you being out there and sharing your story is a great thing. What what message would you be giving out to employers? Um, for them to help facilitate making it easier for people with disabilities to get into the, into the workforce and what can we be doing differently? Yeah, look for an employer, it's actually ridiculously easy. You, you, there are so many support networks out there. Um, like I said, there are federal government schemes that fund any modification that you need. There are um, agencies that are also federally funded that can provide any of the support that's required. Um, and there is so much literature out there and there's so much initiatives out there and all these things show that having all this diversity in your workplace benefits productivity innovation profits all that kind of stuff there was a uh, initiative started in the last within the last two years it's called the valuable 500 and it was spearheaded by people like richard branson and they were just looking at signing up 500 the world's biggest companies to make sure that uh, disability inclusion is in their agenda. I, I think a, a lot of these fears are just in your head and if you give it a try, you'll be pleasantly surprised. That's pretty much what I can say about the topic. Sure, no, that's great. Um, that's awesome, like, that's, um, that's a really good insight and like, thanks very much for, for giving us the time just to, to share your story and uh, yeah, I'd, I'd urge everybody just to uh, to get online and, and read a bit more about about what you've been through and some of the initiatives and, and organisations that you're working with. And if we can uh, all do our bit, it's a it's a, a good cause for uh, for us all to be championing. Um, Thank you so much. Um, no, that's this is one of the people that's actually made all this possible. My mom, she's uh, Hello. she's been. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Um, do you want to poke your head? Yeah. So she's. Hello. She's been by my side ever since this happened and she's been there for me every day and today she actually works with a lot of people with spinal cord injuries and disabilities to get them into the workplace and education as well. Um, so all the resources are there and you could always ask this lovely lady any questions as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Mum to, mom to the rescue. Yeah. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> oh, that's good. Well, look, um, keep, keep up the good work, um, you know, on this front and, and championing this cause and keep up the good work at the hospital and the emergency department and uh, I'm sure everybody will be will be doing their bit to pull together so we can all sort of get out of this the come out the other end okay.